What's up, everybody? Pastor Nate here at Wake of World Church. Uh, this is uh, well, Wake of World Church is a branch off of Wake of World Ministry, um, basically a, um, a part of the what I'm calling the Acts movement. Acts stands for Active Church Teams Movement. It's getting involved in the underground church planting, starting the homes. So I'm going to do all the. I'm going to go a little bit more into that at the end, as I do um, on every sermon, and how you can become a part of that. Um, but just to go over briefly what we went over last month. And what we're getting into now. Last month, if you watched, um, the Lord really put on my heart that, um, yet again, the spiritual warfare was going to kick up a notch. But the word that he gave is, and the more in the realms, the wording of war, uh, prepare for a spiritual war like we've never experienced before. Um, so I, I did a series on spiritual warfare. In, in light of the... In light of the Halloween celebration um, that so many think is has godly ties, it has nothing to do with God. It's not a holy day at all. It's actually a day that we should have nothing to do with besides praying and, and uh, going and witnessing. But you can watch all of that. I also expose Halloween. Uh, if you see in there, it says Halloween and then the truth in captions. I encourage you to go check that out. I'm also going to follow up with what I said in the video talking about um, Christmas, okay, um, how we, how basically how it's celebrated the way we see it all over TV, um, what we were brought up as, it's very pagan, and how we need to just focus on Christ in this season, and, and but anyways, I'm going to go more on that at the end of the month, but right now, today, I'm actually going to be starting a sermon series that I'm just basically calling Thanksgiving Sermon Series, and part one is love. And the reason why I'm starting with love, as we'll see at the end here. But basically, when I when I say love in captions, I ask the question is, have we forgotten about love in the season of thanks and giving? I'm talking about November two through December. And this in this season of thanks and giving, have we forgotten about love? And what what does love mean to you? So be asking yourself that. When you hear the word love, what comes to mind? As we get started, I read from the ESV. Um, I'd like to break into the King, King James. I'm going to pray about that some more. Um, but for the meantime, I'm going to read from the King. Or, I'm going to read from the ESV. So um, I, I do have some notes for you guys. If you want to write them down, I'll try to make them in bullet points. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have this recorded in time to put that on the video, so you'll just have to pause it and write them down if you want. But first, you know, it's been a crazy day. Um, it's about, oh, 10.40 at night on Saturday, November um, 8th. So um, let's just go ahead and open a prayer. I mean, I know this is recorded, but I think it's very important to start the sermon with prayer, mostly because I don't want you guys necessarily to hear from me. I want you to hear from God's word and what he can speak through me, through the Holy Spirit. So I'm just going to go ahead and open in prayer. Father, Lord, I come before you. I don't want to be a man of many words, Lord. Lord, I do this out of obedience to what you've called me to do in my life and with my life, Lord. I do this out of love for you and wanting others to experience your love. And how we can love others, Lord, as you are the greatest teacher of that. Because your very being is love and mercy. So, Lord, uh, I ask you to move me out of the way and let your will be done, Lord. I, I invite the Holy Spirit to be upon this place. And as people watch this video, Lord, I, I pray wherever they are in the world, whatever time of the day it is or night, Lord, that the Holy Spirit would be present with them, Lord. That, uh, Lord, you would convict our hearts on things as you've as you've convicted mine in writing it, Lord. I praise your holy name, King of Kings. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Okay, so starting off, what do we norm what do we normally see happening around this time of year, November through December, as I was kind of just discussing before? Really just kind of think of this, picture this. Here's a here's a challenge for you. Think back if you're if you're around my age, I'm not that old, I'm twenty seven. Think back when you were ten. Or even, I think even like 
six or seven, if you can remember that. And I think when you're an adult. Now, about the only thing that has changed is how crazy shopping is becoming. You're talk I'm talking about Black Friday. But have you noticed that it's more a tradition of what we do? It's basically what we're taught that, okay, this is what happens on this time. So that's what I'm kind of kind of going to break down here in the first part is tradition versus love. So in my notes here, I have people become normally are more busier than, than any other time of the year through November and December. They are house cleaning. Basically what I mean by that is a lot of times people will clean up that spare room that they, they use for storage and they're gonna turn that into a uh, spare bedroom, right? For a uh, visiting family member or a guest of a family, you know, just inviting people in. They're cleaning that out, they're, they're cleaning up their house, they're, they're really doing some deep cleaning because oh, that family member is a clean freak and they're coming. Or some people just, you know, they don't care at all. But they usually try to make room for guests and, and for all the company that's coming. People will tend to start stocking up on food uh, because of the two big meals that we that we uh, partake in as tradition is um, Thanksgiving and Christmas. And then people are paying more attention. I know this is a fact. People pay more attention to the newspaper around this time of year. Why is that? That is because they look for the pre-Black Friday deals. And then when the Black Friday deals finally come to light, people are looking for those like, oh, I can go and get that, that Apple laptop for so-and-so price at approximately 1245 at the register. It'll be 75% off, you know, that type of stuff. But what does that do? What does that do? That gets you looking forward to something. Does it not? That has it not turned into a tradition. That is what people do. I worked in retail at Dick's Sporting Goods. I was called in for the early morning shift, 2 a.m. to I forget what time. Wow, let me tell you, um, recovery. Picture a mountain this high of sweaters. Okay, and there's a table, so it's even higher. Okay, picture that. Picture gloves and sweaters and coats and hats and shoes just thrown across the floor. People just opening. Oh nope, doesn't fit. Just throws on the floor. Can't 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 go ahead and put that away because I, I, I man, 1245 is coming or whatever whatever deal is coming their way. That's that's a tradition that we place in our mind. It may not seem like it's about me 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 me. It may be similar to my kids, my husband. I gotta get this gift, this that and the other thing. Or I really want this because it's this low price this one time of the year. And given, you know, that is, that, that is pretty cool that we can get things at basically um, the, a little bit more than it costs to actually build the, the, the equipment. This is the time of the year where companies make the profit back to everything they did the whole year. So that's why things are so low, basically. If I, I'm not a stock guy, so if I explain that wrong, whatever. But my question is, in the midst of this, what about love? What about love? Where does that come into place? So if you want to take notes here, now I want to talk about this because I do this stuff myself and it's, I'm not too crazy on the black shopping, uh, the Black Friday shopping stuff because I'm usually working. Um, uh, I still work in retail. But this next part this next part is completely true about me on some things. And these are some things I need to work on. So if you want to take notes, put up the top here, tradition versus love. And then keep in mind what this season is, and it's Thanksgiving, or if I, how I like to put it is thanks and giving. So in part one, if you will, A, tradition says... Now, you can write this in your notes. Tradition says family members on the 27th of December or whenever you house that day to take the, the part of the feast, the 27th of November, have a bunch of food, play games, watch the movies, maybe even go sliding if there's snow on the ground if you're in that part of the area. So that's the first point. But here's the next point, and this is where I 
come in. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you do. A lot of times we wear a fake smile around our family during these traditions, these these um, festivities, if you will. Um, you know, eating a meal and you're just smiling away. And really, you're wearing that fake smile and you want to just be like, ooh, you, you know. Um, but you're wearing that fake smile. But you take it off when you get into the car and you yourself go home if you're by yourself. But that's when you're just like, man, man, I can't stand him. I can't stand her. Whatever family member rank that is, you know, um, brother, sister, mom, dad, grandfather, uncle, aunt, cousin, nephew, nieces, whatever it may be. You're wearing that fake smile, but really you're like, oh man, what you did the whole year, you've been, you've just been waiting. It, it, it's just sometimes it's funny because we wait this whole year, you know, just dreading that, okay, this next year I'm going to have to go and sit across this person again. I can't stand them. So we wear this fake smile. Now, give, again, keep in mind what the season is and this is thanks and giving. And I'm asking the question is, where is love in this? Okay, I'm going somewhere. Bear with me here. And maybe it's not all your family. Maybe it's not just that one family member. Maybe it's your whole family you got a problem with. But am I right on it? Can honestly you say that that's not you? And maybe it isn't. Maybe you don't have that problem. Maybe it's, it's something else. Maybe it's the dog that ate your, your plate last year. You're like, oh, dog, you come near my plate, I'll kick you. You know, something like that. Again, where's the love for the dog? Hey, he needs some turkey too, right? But, but you know, uh, and this, this is the last point to this part is tradition says that you gather with family that you may have not seen since last season, November and December, and you love them. And you love them. Again, kind of that fake smile. I really don't know you, aunt, whoever, where, what part of the, okay. Or, you know, that one sister that brings her boyfriend for the first time to meet the family. And, and you find out that they're getting engaged and that's going to be your brother-in-law. You're like, ah, uh, I'm supposed to love this guy. Or if I, whatever it may be. Tradition says that family gathers and you show love for each other, even if, here's the point even if you don't have love for them because of some things that they may have done. But this is in the season of thanks and giving. And again, the question is, where is the love and what love am I talking about? So the question is, is that really love? Loving even your family. Is that really the love that is supposed to be shown in the season of thanks and giving? Again, what is your definition of love? I mean, loving your family, your mom, dad, uncle, aunt, cousins, grandparents, is a type of love, but is that love in the season of the things and giving? Is that the type of love? Again, I'll ask the question. To be honest to me, there are two different types of love. There is that love for family, friends, your boyfriend slash girlfriend, husband slash wife, um, and children, you know, your family basically. Two is that godly love. That's what I'm getting at. Where is that godly love for those who say they are believers in Jesus Christ and are followers of him? In the midst of all this tradition, where is that love? That godly love. Godly means, if you were to break down the def definition, means set apart. That love that sets us apart from the world. That love that shows that we're different than the world. Where is that love? Which brings me to my first uh, scripture. If you want to turn to it, I'm just going to read it from my note page here. 1 Corinthians 16, 14, and it says, Let all that you do be done in love. 
the original language this was written in was Greek. And the Greek word that was used to describe and paint the picture, as I like to say in, the ser in, in my sermons, is love, the word used to describe this type of love, is agape. Which is the most purest form, basically that divine love, that Christ-like love. That love that Christ Jesus has for us as we're supposed to have for others. So it says, let all that you do be done in love. Because that, that means some of the things that we do for family during this season. Absolutely. So again, if you're not getting my if you're not getting the picture here, I'm gonna ask the question again. So we're in the thing, we're this part is called love. So the question is, have we forgotten love? Have we forgotten this love right here in the midst of this season? Let me ask you just three questions here. And I'll kind of give you my version of the answer. It may not be true for all cases, but does this agape love show when you're preparing all the food for both feasts? Maybe in some cases. Maybe you're that parent, that, that mom, or that friend that's preparing food for other family and friends around you like, man, I hate this season. I gotta stay up until 5 a.m. to make sure the turkey's done because everybody's gonna do this and that, and I gotta get the pie, call the aunt and say, hey, get the ca ca casserole, all this. Maybe in some cases you can see that godly love. Does that type of love show, that agape love show when serving the food? Or how about doing the dishes for you kids if that's part of the tradition? That you would do the dishes after everyone is done eating and your parents were the ones that that uh, got all the food ready and carved the turkey and they did all this work now it's your turn to put in some giving back right maybe for some that agape love can show in that does that love does that love that agape love show when hanging out with family members now this one as i said this one i could see more of a possibility of but why is that? Because some family members we struggle to get along with, as I've been saying. Some family members might resent you or have hatred towards you in some form. Or, let's turn the tables. It's you that has that towards them. And if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, I mean, I, I, I'm going to be honest here, people. I have a type of resentment towards a family member of mine. Because of some things that he's done to my family. And the thing is, is I'm not I'm not just feeling convicted that I need to show this towards him during this season, but throughout the whole year. This agape love. I mean, if you're not getting that type of love, let me paint a better picture for you. Is that we were the ones that should have been on that cross. We were the ones that were. God even stated that, no, no, because of what you've done, this should be you on here. But because I love you, I'm going to take that place. That, that, that Christ-like love, that, that godly love, that's what sets us apart from the world. Apart from tradition. Oh, hallelujah. That's why I see a little bit more that's a possibility of that agape love showing when, you, when you're hanging around some family members, when you want to just be like, oh, you, you, and be like, man, I'll be honest with you. You've had a past, you know, and, and what you've done is wrong, but you know what, man, I'll, I, I want to look past that. I want to look past that and rebuild whatever it is that, that went on. The one thing that, you know, I used to believe even in my earlier years as a believer is, you know, forgive, but don't forget. And sometimes, sometimes I still fall in that. But you know what? I also have to remember that I serve the living King of Kings and what he did for us. And he says, you know what? I don't see what you did anymore because my blood has washed you clean because of what I did for you on that cross. All right. As I, as I go through this, you'll see what this means in this, 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 this season of giving and thanks, or thanks and giving, excuse me. 
because it, it begs the question as I'm going to get to here at the end, and I, I think it's so true. But going on, uh, first jo- or, I'm sorry, John 13, 34 to 35. And this is Jesus saying this. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. Verse 35. By this all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. If you have it, well, people will know that you are my disciples, my followers, that they will know you. What have I been saying through this whole this whole this whole sermon? Hallelujah. What have I been saying through this whole sermon? That we want that godly love that sets us apart from the world. The world will what? Know you. People of this world will know that you are followers of me, of Jesus. If you have love for one another. Each time love is used here. It is either the Greek word agapeo, which is very similar to agape. It pretty much means the same thing. It is that divine love. How he loves us and how we love him is how we should love others. 1 John 4, 19 and 20, and it says, We love because he loved us. Because he first loved us, excuse me. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God who he has not seen. Because of what the word says, that we have physically not seen God because we would not be able to stand in the presence and live. Our bodies would just, we're done, you know. Um, We won't be able to do that until he gives us our immortal bodies. That's also in, I believe, First or Second Corinthians. Um, but going on here, th- I mean, think about that. Let me read that again. We love because He first loved us. If anyone says, "I love God and hates his brother," he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, who he has seen, right? Cannot love God who he has not seen. Guess what? Agape and agapeo is used in verses 19 and 20. It's talking about that divine love. First Chronicles 16, 34. That's in the um, Old Testament if you want to turn there real quick. Verse 34, it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to God, his love, his steadfast love endures forever. If you were to basically bullet point those and underline just that, those two points, give thanks, his steadfast love endures forever. That's powerful. But it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast steadfast love endures forever. So just real quick here, just real quick. I want to go a little bit deeper. Let's forget about the the loving family part, right? Because honestly, that's something that that should be a given to try to get over. That's family. Let's say it's someone you don't know. Let's say this is where Lord... Lord, send the Holy Spirit to convict me on this as well as others. Lord, right now as they're listening to this, Lord, send the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's say it's someone you don't know. Let's say it's that homeless person or someone that has been in and out of trouble their whole life. Shouldn't we love them, that agape love them, and show them that agape love? Absolutely. This is where I struggle to see how I can do this. It's not as much as I can't go to that person that I know has been in trouble their whole life or can see it in their walk right now. It's the mere fact of going up to the person and 
Lord, how do I love this person? How would you love this person? You know what the one thing is, is have a conversation with them? That they're a human being just as you. That he created them just as he created you. That they were that you were lost at one point in time, just as they are lost right now. Did you know that the holiday season, if you will, November through December, Thanksgiving and Christmas, where it's the biggest time basically for family gathering, is the highest time for suicide across the world, across America. This is the highest time for suicides to take place. This is also, I believe, I could be wrong on this, this is also the season where most people start filing for divorce. Man, and what happens the next year around after that's all said and done? Ooh, man, it's a time of sorrow. It's time to think back, man. Last, the week before Thanksgiving, my wife gave me those papers and it said, force on it. How am I supposed to go around my family now? What are they going to think about me? Well, man, last year, my sister and my brother reached out to me and I chose to put on that, that, that Thanksgiving football game and I get a call three hours later and that person killed themselves. Or how about that neighbor that you know they were going through something. You've never really talked to them, but you, you just you just heard and what they're going through by rumor, but you never went to their doorstep. And you find out the next day after Thanksgiving that this person has killed themselves. You know, maybe it is that person that's been in and out of jail or rehab or prison. Should we not show that agape love to them? Now again, people, I'm not trying to just judge on you to help you be accountable. I'm saying this on me first. You know, just as much as saying a friendly hello and, you know, happy Thanksgiving, whatever it may be, or hey, you know what, let me call the people I'm going to go eat with and see if, if we have an extra place for you or if we have enough food. If not, hey, maybe me and you can later or tomorrow go and get something. The season of thanks and giving. But this is what I'm getting at here at the end. In Matthew 5, 43 to 47, it says, You have heard that it has been said, You shall love your neighbor and hate. Now, this is Jesus saying this. You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Jesus says to you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Oh, let, me, let me go back to this. Okay, now let me go back to this. Man, Lord, I know, you know, I don't. I'm, I'm taking, you know, the, the person's pointing the finger, right? Now I'm the person that's having the finger pointed at them. Oh, Lord, I know I messed up. I know this family member has something, you know, wrong with me. Or whatever it may be, Lord, Lord, I just pray you bless them, Lord. Lord, just somehow rebuild my relationship with my family. You know, doing that type of stuff. Well, that person down the street just going and praying for them. You know, that's something I need to work on. I need to get out there. Going on here, it says, pray for those who persecute you, verse 45, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven, for he makes his... Now listen to this part. This part, man, this is God, people. This is, this is him. And he says, for he makes his son, the sun that we have in the morning, you know, that shines down. It says, he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good. And he sends the rain on the just and the unjust. He does it for both. We're on this earth. He created us. Whether you're doing good or evil, you have a relationship with him, you know him or you don't, he's still going to have the sun rise. If it's, you know, if he gives you another day. By the way, that's why it's called a present. He sends the rain. He, he, he sends us in and out of seasons of all different types. Then it goes on to say in verse 46, For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Going, going back to my question here, let's say that's the homeless person or the person that's been in and out of trouble their whole life. Okay, so if you're just, if, we're, if you love those who love you, 
who know you basically, your family, let's say, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do even the Gentiles do the same? Yeah. If you'll turn with me, I'm actually, I didn't put this in my notes. I, I just have it in. I want to read this from the Bible itself. So I just have it printed on my notes here. Go to James chapter 2, verses uh, 14 through 18. James chapter 2, verses 14 through 18, it says this, What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself. So also faith by itself. If it does not have works, it is dead. Let me read that again, verse 17. So also faith by itself, if it is, if it does not have works, is dead. Verse 18, but someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works and I will show you my faith by my works. You know, the Bible does say that it's not by works alone, at least any man should boast, right? If I mess, uh, paraphrase that, you don't want to quote the word and get it wrong. But that's basically it. You know, it's not by works, but our works should also show our faith. It should show that godly love that sets us apart from the world by doing these things. Especially in this season of thanks and giving and all year round. We should be treating this, oh hallelujah, we should be treating this season of thanks and giving all year round. You know, when I was in the shelter last year and I was at the um, foundation dinners, we had a, a guest pastor there who was serving us food and, you know, it was January. It was after Christmas, but you know what he kept saying? He said, Merry Christmas in the form of not the pagan way, but Mary, Christ was born. A Savior was born to die for us. God became flesh to die for us. It is a greeting of blessing. It's not just something that happens in December. It's, it's every day of the year. We should be thankful. The season of thanks and giving. First John 4.16, if you want to turn there, if not, I'm just going to read it. So we have come to know and believe the love that God has for us. Listen to this part. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. If that's not convicting you, let me read it again. First John 4.16, so we have come to know and to believe that the love that love that God has for us. Let me read that again. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love. It's very being is love. And whoever abides in love abides in God and God abides in him. Can I get an amen? I mean, that's, that's his very being is love and mercy. His In mercy, he is loving. But his very being is love. And if we know him and he abides in us, we should be loving others like him. Do you, do you, do you, are you getting that agape, that agape of love? In closing, I want to read this because, man, this, this is what really uh, convicted me is one of the parts here. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it is pretty well known as the way of love, as it's titled here. And it says this in 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, 
Listen to this part. I am a noisy gong or clanging cymbal. Let me just go ahead and uh, put that in a term that we're pretty much all familiar with. You know, when somebody says they're going to do something, but they don't, what, what is that known as? Y'all, y'all, that's just noise. You're just making noise. You're not making action. That's just a bunch of noise to him and to people around you. Am I right? It, 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 let me just read it again. If I speak in tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or cymbal or a clanging cymbal. I'm noise, basically. And if I have prophetic powers and understanding of mysteries and of knowledge, and I have all faith, so to remove mountains, the mustard seed, but I have not love, I am nothing. Okay, now let me read something here. Um, let me see. The verse 3 read, hold on. I forgot this scripture. I believe it's in Matthew that says this. This is Jesus' words. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the ones who does the will of the Father who is in heaven on that day will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And I will, I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Again, what do we read before this? God is love, and, it, and he abides in us. We're to love others like that. That's basically the whole realm of what it's been saying here. So if we can do all these things, you know, the tongues of men and angels, prophetic powers and understanding. But if we have not loved and loved like the Father, like God loves us, and tell others about his love, let me ask you a question. Do you honestly know him, who is the very being of love? Do you honestly have a relationship with him? Is he going to be the one that says to you, I don't know you. I am loved. I, I, I don't see that. I mean, what about that one family member? What if it's something just as simple as that? And he is with tears in his eyes. Man, you didn't get it. You didn't get my love. I didn't just have it towards you. I had it towards your uncle, your aunt, your grandfather, that one person down the street, that one person that you know that was locked up for years or that divorced widow or whatever it may be. But you didn't go love him like I did. What if it was just like that? He says, man, I don't, I don't know you. That even the things that you said you were going to do and some of the things I gifted you with, but you did not love, I don't know you. Again, people, I'm feeling convicted about this myself because I can step this up. And I know some of you can as well. If not, hey, pray for me. Go back to, verse, uh, to 1 Corinthians 13. If I give away, this is verse 3, if I give away all that I have, and if I have delivered up my body to be burned, but I have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own ways. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for the prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know, in part, we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, and I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now faith, hope, love abide. These three are the greatest. 
Now, let me read that again, verse 13. So now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love. In closing here, this is the point I want to make. I believe that one cannot honestly be thankful and give thanks, whether that's with a material, physically, or in emotional things. One cannot honestly be thankful and give thanks if they have not learned to love that God they love first. So rather, the Holy Spirit is convicting you to show that love to a family member or to a stranger this season and throughout the whole year. Let's just, let's just mark this. Okay, 2014 to 2015, we want to make every day as possible, as possibly as we can, as Thanksgiving or Christmas, that that joyful time of the year, that thankful time of the year. Let's let's turn that into that agape love year, year round. Let's turn the, thing, the, the season of thanks and giving 365 rather than just basically a little less than what, 40 days basically of the celebrations, maybe a little bit more. Let's turn that to 365. Let's show that agape love 365. So let's love like him and not focus on the traditions. I'm not saying turn agape into a tradition because it can't be, because it's a perfect love. There is no tradition. It's loving like him, and he, his very being is love. If you don't know how to do that, all the, the Bible says, if you have not asked, you won't receive. So ask him. Say, Lord, you know, I'm, I'm struggling. Let me just, let me just show you how this, this works. I'm not trying to be a man of many words or exalt myself, but Lord, I struggle with loving my uncle for what he's done to my family. The pain he has caused, Lord. But Lord, I know that you love him more than I love him. Or any family member. And that Lord, it pains your heart to see what he is doing to his family, for one, Lord, but what he's doing to himself as well and how the family is treating him in the midst of it. Lord, show us how to love others like you. Lord, I'm not trying to say this. just I, I really mean this, Lord. I want to sink your face in this. Lord, for others that are watching this, Father, I just, man, show us. Lord, you're, you, you are the master. You're king of kings. You, you very, your very being is love. Lord, if it's to a stranger, Lord, whatever whatever your will is for us this season to love others, Lord, and turn that to year round, Lord, just, Lord, I ask for just, you give confirmation of what that means for people and for myself and others that watch this. Lord, I praise you and I thank you for this word you've given us. And for blessing this ministry and blessing those who watch this. In the name of Jesus, I pray. So just let that echo in your mind, people. If one can't honestly be thankful and give thanks if they have not learned to love. Because honestly, how are you going to be able to do that if you don't know where the root of thankfulness and, and giving is? It's love. He gave it all for us on the cross. Should we not be thankful of that? It first comes to love before thanks. Sadly, we have to receive something or have something said to us to say thank you. He showed us love first. He loved first. So that's my prayer. So announcements. Um, if you want to become a part of this ministry of Wake World Church, become a part of the Acts movement. Um, as you know, there is no startup cost or anything. Honestly, it's you getting on your hands and knees if, if you want or just having a conversation. Lord, hey, if your calling is for me to start a type of Bible study or a church in my home, Lord, I ask you to just give me confirmation. That, that's it. He, he ordained me first before man did. Okay? Um, it's his calling on your life. If you honestly believe that, um, that he is calling you to do this, then step up. You know, start a church in your home. Um, all the information to contact me is in the description box, box below. Um, the Facebook page, and on the Facebook page, you'll see me uh, throw links to the Wake Up World Church 
site, the, the, the Facebook link is to Wake Up World Ministry, but you'll see on there the links to Wake Up World Church. So I invite you and I encourage you to step up and do that. Um, uh, as far as tithes and offerings, uh, I don't have a um, deal set up right now to how it's going to work. Um, as of right now, the Lord's providing for everything. Um, I mean, I work, I pay for the roof over my head, the food, um, you know, um, I don't use tithes for that. Uh, right now, especially in this season, um, so many people are struggling. Um, I ask you just to go and seek out somebody that's in, in need, um, that's in need of something to be given to them to help uh, their family. Maybe it's a turkey or something. So, uh, and maybe go even deeper than that. You know, when I'm talking about people in need, why don't you give them um, a chance to help them put a stepping stone in their life, help them get on their feet? Maybe that's, you know, instead of buying all these other presents, maybe just one or two for our kids and the rest, let's go ahead and bring somebody in. Help them get on their feet. Help them get a job. Help them save some money. You know, that's where I'd rather the tithes go right now. Um, now, as far as the, I, I talked about this before, and I'm still going to just, I believe the Lord's going to provide. I, I really need a laptop. Um, I, I want to get back to the green screen. I, I found a way maybe I can do it on this operating system here. But ideally, the laptop I have is not made for editing. It's not going to last um, that long when I do that. It's going to kill the processor. Um, the editing software that I'm very used to, and I can do the stuff that you see before in the last couple of months, um, it was wiped off of my, my laptop because I had to restore it. Um, it was basically dead, and praise the Lord, he brought it back to life because the one I have is just not working. <laughs> but uh, uh, the, honestly, and this is not a want, this is a need, okay? Um, the, the laptop that I'm needing in the, uh, the Vegas Pro software that I'm needing in, in, in total is about $1,400. I'm not asking you to send that as a tithe um, or the money as a check to me or in cash. I'm asking if that if the Lord puts that on your heart to help me with so I can go back to the green screen and ideally if I start traveling with the other ministry I'm a part of every now and then these sermons are important. The videos are important to do weekly. Um, so if I ever go on the road, I can't exactly pack up, you know, an actual computer station and, and go on the road. So I need a laptop that's capable of that. And as I said, I don't know if this one's going to last that long. So I'm asking the Lord for, to send someone that would be willing to help me with that. All I'd ask is you contact me. My email address is down there. Um, say, hey, you know, I feel the Lord has called me to help you with that. I'm going to go and look at some laptops and I need your address and just send it to me. That's that's how I do that. Okay. It can be anonymous, but as I said, that's not a want, that's a need. Um, if you feel called to do that, so be it. But you know, another thing in this season, guys, is I'm going to let you go here is, again, don't forget about love, that agape love in the season, and especially this season, and after this season. Let's not forget about that agape, that agape love we should show towards others. One of the most important ways you can do that is when you're gathering with your family, just tell them about Jesus. So I encourage you guys to do that. Pray for me that the Holy Spirit convicts me to step up and try to love that one family member that I'm, um, I'm in a way resentful of. Uh, I, I have that resentment in spirit, so I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. And just pray that the Lord will show me how to love him like he would love him. All right, guys, God bless. I hope you have a blessed week. Please share this. Please get on the Facebook page, especially on the Wake Up World Church page. Get active on the comments. And, uh, um, again, like and subscribe. Please share this with friends. I would love comments and feedback. God bless.